Okay. So, well, we are on YouTube. I'm trying to get the Facebook up. So okay. uh, it was up earlier. Give me one second. Nope. Go for it, Master Chief. While you do that, um, I'll keep an eye on our viewers as they come trickling in. So you let me know and stop me at any time when you get set up. Yep, so, go ahead. All right. Recruiting Nation, civilians, um, anybody interested in uh, or is in the realm of, of leadership, professional development, um, self-awareness, thank you. However it is that you came to this page, to this platform, thank you for joining us this afternoon and it's Friday. And um, first off, would also like to say uh, we have a very special guest for you guys today. Uh, if you are not aware and you just happen to stumble across this platform, we are right now getting plugged into, if you're joining us from YouTube or from Facebook. So at this time, as we are getting everybody plugged in, why don't you go ahead and chime in with us and let us know where you are joining us from. Are you joining us from Instagram, from YouTube, or from Facebook? We'd love to hear from you. All right, I see some of you guys logging in. Okay, so I am back. I don't know what's going on with the Facebook page. So we are not able to stream to that right now. Um, I'm checking to see I have uh, the, the Facebook page open, but it's not really accepting it, which is frustrating. So uh, let's see. Do you know any way to get it onto a Facebook page there, DC1? Let me see if I can move it to my NCC, my personal page, and we'll stream there. Okay, because what, can... what I'm doing now, okay, no, it says, no. Nope. Looks like we got a lot of YouTubes. <laughs> so if you're commenting on, I don't know the Zoom password, that was the previous training that we had on our Recruiting Force uh, group page. We are now on our Leadership Within podcast with Master Chief Rodney and our special guest, Admiral Velez, as we talk about the leadership within. What we're doing now is we're getting plugged into or attempting to on our Facebook platform, the Leadership Within page, but we are on YouTube. So if you are on YouTube, obviously you're joining us here today. Thank you again. Please go ahead and like subscribe and share this page, this platform with your fellow recruiters, with your coworkers, with your family or your friends. We have some great content for you guys today and we're really ex excited, excuse me, to get started. Let's see here. Any luck, Master Chief? Okay, technical difficulties are not going to allow me to do it. So. Unfortunately, we're going to only be on YouTube, So, um, but we'll go with that. This is how we roll with the punches, and we'll be able to share it later on the other pages. So thank you for everybody putting up with us. Apparently, we're not uh, computer uh, computer brainiacs, but we'll get there eventually. Uh, we'll have to play with this on some, some things later on. So I appreciate everybody checking in today. DC1, great job covering me. As always, I appreciate you. Um, if you have not yet, like and subscribe and do all the fun stuff. Um, so we have a very, very special guest today. Uh, we really, we've been blessed last week with Master Chief Sharara. Um, and then this week, we have the Commander of Navy Recruiting Command, Rear Admiral Velez. So without any further ado, uh, he's been patiently standing by as we try to work this out. I'm going to bring in Rear Admiral Velez right now. Um, so let's add him to the stream. There he is. And we're going to try to get the fancy picture. There we go. So uh, Admiral, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Master Rodney and DC1. Scott, good to see you both. Yes, sir. So we have a little technical difficulties on the Facebook page. So right now we're just on YouTube. Uh, but what we will do is uh, share the uh, the YouTube video to the Facebook, and then we're going to give it to the PAO at, at uh, NRC as well. So That's the great. message will still get out there. Apologize to everybody out there uh, that we weren't able to get it um, up and running the right the first time. So, Admiral, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Honored and, and, and glad you uh, shared your time with us on a, on this little uh, excursion into leadership. No, I I appreciate you inviting me and uh, you know fo following a superstar, Master Sharara. So uh, 
I think you 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 went step below this week, but uh, I'll do my best to uh, uh, to live up to the hype and uh, at least give you some perspective from uh, my 29 years of service and uh, uh, in leading sailors at sea. Outstanding, sir. Thank you. So not only do I want to thank you, but I also want to thank your staff from the executive suite and the PAO's office and really everybody at, uh, at NRC to help make this happen. Uh, N9, letting uh, DC1 Scott partake is always a good thing. Um, she's been a busy, busy person today. Uh, she had you on earlier. I yeah. watched that phenomenal. So if you've not seen it yet, please go to her page or to the uh, the recruiting page and check that out. Great yeah, training. That, with that, that that event that she was running today was fantastic. I have told my EA to uh, put on my weekly schedule. I'm going to try to at least, if not participate, because I was just interrupting her. I'm going to at least listen in and uh, definitely, because uh, I learned. I was like, oh, man, we got all these websites that I, have, I had no idea existed. So uh, definitely uh, w- worthwhile my time today. So thank you for that, DC1. Thank you, sir. All right. So without further ado, sir, we will jump into some leadership with Admiral Velez, Commander, Naval Recruiting Commander. Welcome aboard. First off, you've been here five, six weeks tops. Yeah, five weeks. So uh, just to kind of learn. (laughs) Well, there's a lot of stuff going on right now in in the world and, and taking over a brand new organization has to have some unique leadership challenges. So that kind of leads us into our first question, sir. How would you describe your leadership philosophies and, and leadership style? Hey, Master. So I you know I, I'm I'm a believer of treating everybody everybody with dignity and respect, uh, being a, a positive uh, a person, uh, and uh, the most important thing I, I think that I that, that I try to live up to every day is uh, to to not ask to someone to do something that you are not willing to do. Uh, so you know, leading by example, uh, you know, being a a, a good moral uh, example of, of doing the things right. Uh, you know, have some core beliefs that, that you will live up to uh, and just be positive. I think uh, uh, positive, you know, a positive message just kind of helps everything go, go smoother. Uh, and it just uh, uh, when you're a positive person, everybody around you kind of just gravitates and, and, and that positive message just expands and it really helps uh, the commands and, uh, and, and things go, go up much, much easier. Uh, outstanding. Uh, couldn't agree with you more on a, on a, on a professional and personal level on that. Positivity will win the day. Yeah. Um, and it's it's that mindset uh, that, that can really change uh, a command, an organization, anything. If you go in with that positive thought process, anything's possible. Absolutely. I, I think that not just that, the positive fact and, and just to believe in, you know, that anything is possible, that you, that you work and you try hard. And uh, if you're able to communicate that to the team. I mean, I've always been amazed what sales can accomplish when uh, you give them a mission, a goal, uh, and you explain to them a, why this is important, why we need to get this done. Uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, I've never been uh, uh, underwhelmed, I've always been overwhelmed what they what they what they do every day. So, uh, but it starts with that being a positive leader and, and just uh, uh, working just as hard as everybody else. Outstanding, sir. I could not agree more. So you've been in the Navy. You said twenty nine years. Yep. But leadership doesn't start when you join the Navy. You start to hone those skills well beforehand. So what has aided in developing your leadership styles over your lifetime, Navy, pre-Navy, uh, just in general life? No, I mean, I, that's a great question. And uh, uh, something that, I, you know, as I get older, you uh, kind of ponder uh, a bit more, you know, why you are the way you are. I, I say start with my parents. I had a great parents. My dad, uh, uh, you know, both my parents uh, came out of nothing. So, you know. Uh, my grandparents, I uh, was in second and third grade education, uh, and, and my, my parents kind of worked their way through college. My mom became a, uh, a district superintendent for a school in Puerto Rico. My dad became a lawyer. Uh, it's very successful. Uh, but again, uh, to, to pay for college, he had to, you know, he, he sold shoes and a bunch of, bunch of uh, uh, little jobs around. Uh, so it just taught me the, the, the value of hard work, of being honest to people, uh, and just, you know, treat everybody with dignity and respect. So I think of anybody, my dad, probably biggest influence on, on, on that hard work uh, and just being a, uh, a, a good, upstanding person. And at the end of the day, help people when you can and just treat everyone uh, the way you want to be treated, which is uh, something that I think is very important. So I, I, I really like three words you've said so far in a leadership context are hard work, yep. positivity, and then valuing people and, and, and being respectful in those types of environments. That's a, that's a key to leadership. That's just a key, in my opinion, to life. Yeah. Uh, if you treat people right, you're going to get good things. Exactly. I mean, I, I, I stay in the Navy because of the people. I mean, I love sailors. I, I love the sense of mission that, that you get. 
uh, you know, and accomplishment and doing something that's important. Uh, and, but it's, at the end of the day, it starts with people. And that's why this job, you know, when I was told that I was coming here, I was so excited because, uh, you know, we get to we get to pick the, the seedlings that are going to come in behind us uh, and take this Navy into the into the into the next century. Uh, so it is, it is an amazing opportunity and something that I take very seriously because people are so important to what we do without people. Uh, you can have the best technology, but if you don't if you don't have that that person to you know, to do the job and carry the fight and think, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Technology doesn't matter. It's about people. That's I could could not agree more with everything you're saying, sir. Just to kind of recap for the YouTube uh, folks, subscribe, like if you if you have a question, please put it on the uh, on the comments. DC one Scott and the Admiral has been gracious enough to extend the time. If there are questions about leadership. He is uh, more than happy to, to take a few minutes to answer those questions if he can. So please don't hesitate to engage with us on the uh, YouTube. And after this, once we get it up on the Facebook pages, we'll we'll go through there as well and and be able to answer any questions or, or do our best to answer questions. So you brought up people, sir. Um, and this is a little wild card. I didn't have it written down, but you brought up people. And I know you watched Master Chief Sharara last, last week. Yep. Um, and she said, this is a, a people centric business or yeah. organization. And, and that to me, I, I'd never heard it put in that way. Um, in, in the way she put it, I thought led perfectly into what we're doing on this, on this YouTube channel and on our, on the Facebook of trying to teach leadership. And it begins with the person, like you said, so that's a hundred percent spot on. So you, I read your bio because that's what you do is a, the admiral checks in. You read his bio. Which you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the the interesting thing. I'm going to ask you this, and you can be open and honest, and, sure. and, and as I know you will. What moments or achievements are you most proud of in your life? Uh, you can professional, personal, whatever. Yeah. So I'll I'll, I'll bin it in, in, in the same category that you just mentioned. Uh, uh, I think as I, as I get older, uh, uh, and, you know, and I start thinking about the past and, and, and what have I accomplished in the Navy. I'm really proud of the folks that work for me. That are doing great things now. So, I mean, I had I have department heads that were my on my first ship that are now commanding officers of ships. That's the cool stuff. I have chiefs that they are now uh, warrant officers and command master chiefs afloat. Um, and, and you know, and I had E3s that are calling me. I say, yeah, uh, get ready to go on their first ship as a division officer. That is the coolest thing that you can do as a leader is just see what the people that you have the, the opportunity to influence to help uh, achieve fantastic and great things. So I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of the folks that are that have helped me along the way. And, and, and now I see them doing fantastic things and also helping others along. So uh, professionally, that's probably my, my most uh, proud achievement. There are folks that uh, in, in, a, in, a small, in a small way, I was able to influence and hopefully help them along. And they're doing that uh, forward to somebody else. Uh, on a personal uh, life, I think, uh, uh, way, uh, I think I'm most proud of my kids as you get older. And uh, uh, I had three wonderful kids. Uh, as a matter of fact, my oldest graduates from college today. Uh, you know, fortunately, the environment we're in uh, is, uh, is is online, and you know, she she did a great job at Virginia Tech, graduating you know, summa magna cum laude. So, you know, 3.9 GPA, doing amazing things. So, really proud of them. My middle one is uh, uh, a nursing school, soon to be hopefully a Navy nurse, and following that in the, in my footsteps. So, very proud of that, and, and proud of my young son who uh, last year finished the Eagle Scout, which is a lot of work. So again, kids. I mean, that, that in the personal life, my, my kids are just a blessing, and I'm I'm really really proud uh, of them. Uh, and then uh, I think uh, you said professional, private, and 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 a family. What's the other one? Um, I, I think you you've answered it all, sir. Yeah, I, think, so, I think it's pretty good. I'm proud but, of uh, people that I've worked with, and I'm proud of my family. So I mean, uh, and then uh, uh, everything else is just is just great, man. It's, it, it, I've had a great a great uh, time in the Navy. Uh, but again, uh, when I talk to folks that are still doing it out there now uh, in the operational world or doing other work, those are the folks that I'm really proud of. Outstanding, sir. That's that's a lot of humility right there. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll say that because you've actually you've, you've got two pretty pretty prestigious things in your bio. Um, but as a good leader, it's not about you. But I want to make sure everybody understands what you have in your bio. So number one, if you've not read it, please take the opportunity to read his bio. But you are the uh, John Paul Jones. Let me read it here so I get it correctly. The Navy League John Paul Jones Award for Inspirational Leadership back in 2016. And I was actually talking to the PAO last night about that. And 
there, you don't win an inspirational leadership award by putting yourself in for an inspirational leadership award. Uh, that would go against being an inspirational leader. So can you talk a little bit about how that came about? And, and, and uh, Yeah. So it, it, it's funny because that, that was one of those that, like you said, I, I had no idea that that, that happened. Uh, my, uh, my command master chief and my XO got together and uh, uh, called out my, uh, my boss, uh, Admiral Malloy, who was a struggle commander. We were uh, out on deployment that year. Uh, and uh, they got talking to the Admiral and, and they, they say, this is what the captain's doing for everybody. You know, he's, he meets with everyone every day, does all these things, after things that nobody else does. And um, they just listed all the things that I, I thought they were, it's my job to do, right? And uh, uh, they thought that was uh, uh, worthy of the, of the nomination. And next thing I know, one day I'm, I'm sitting, I'm, I was actually driving home and I get a phone call from, from the Navy League, say, Captain, uh, I'll let you, let you know that uh, you've been you know, selected for this, blah, blah, blah. Will you be willing to, uh, or you'll be available to come up to uh, Minneapolis for the uh, ceremony? I had no idea. Uh, uh, blown away. Uh, I got back to the ship and uh, XO and, and, and CMC were, were there and, and, and big smiles on their faces. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we got underway, so I didn't get a chance to go get the uh, the, the award in person. Uh, but but they gave me a very nice uh, certificate. And, but at the end of the day, what it meant to me is that uh, uh, again, uh, I was having the right impact and, and uh, just doing my job. And you know, it's uh, did not think I deserved anything. I mean, I got a paycheck and I, I was in command of a warship, but uh, uh, it, it was nice. It's a nice recognition. And, uh, you know, John Paul Jones, one of my heroes, uh, you know, uh, growing up, a uh, guy that, you know, that kind of stepped up to the plate and uh, did a lot for the country and really kind of, you know, we adopt him as a father of the Navy. Uh, so having an, an award that's named after him, it just means, uh, means a hell of a lot. That's one of those boom moments in life. Like it just yeah. happens in your yeah. <laughs> Well, where did this come from? Exactly. So, exactly. That's how it was. Like, no idea. Well, that's good. So you're not actually upset your XO jumped the chain of command in that no, case, right? No, no. I, I, I gave him a pass on that one, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Outstanding. So, uh, you know, I, I read a lot of books, um, and, and but I, I think that most people who, who develop their leadership skills do that. Uh, so I'm not to the book question yet, but that will come up eventually. Sure. Uh, the, the one I'm at right now, sir, is who is your favorite leader in history, if you have one um, that, that you kind of look to, that you like to read about, and, and things along those lines. So you know, I, I mentioned John Paul Jones, uh, and, and you know, there's some some written about him at different time frame, and you know, much more you know removed from where we are today. So I I, I did read a lot about him as, as much as I could, uh, but I think uh, uh, not really current history, but in the last you know 60, 70 years, uh, I'm I'm a big fan of Admiral uh, Ray Spruance. Uh, hero of World War II and uh, of the Pacific. Um, main reason is that, you know, very humble person. Uh, you know, you, everybody, you know, hears about uh, policy and Nimitz and others there. They were much more flamboyant uh, and, and probably uh, uh, more aggressive, et cetera, than, uh, than Admiral Spruance. But Admiral Spruance was a uh, fantastic intellect, uh, aggressive when he needed to be, but just a humble man. Uh, to give you an example, uh, after the, uh, uh, you know, he, he won a, a big major battle in the Pacific. One of his uh, biographers was writing that uh, you know, Admiral Spruance won this battle, you know, and that he won it by himself. And the, 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 the words to say, and he actually, when he was uh, reviewing the, the manuscript, he actually lined it out. And uh, instead of he won the battle, he wrote down, he commanded the group that won the battle. It just tells you the kind of person that he is and just uh, he was. And uh, I, I hope that, uh, you know, that I, I can act like them, that humble, uh, give credit where credit is due and just do your job to the best of your ability. Outstanding. Uh, so now we're on to the favorite book and I, <laughs> I am assuming it's going to be something Navy related. Uh, <laughs> so what is your favorite book or books? So, uh, uh, so my favorite group book, uh, so I'll, 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 that I've read probably in the last few years, uh, uh, Neptune's Inferno. Uh, so a World War II book, uh, you know, uh, 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 just a, a clear, uh, you know, just an amazing description of the sacrifices of, of so many uh, hundreds of sailors to, uh, you know, defense of the country. Uh, you know, so many heroes that die. Just, it is an amazing book. It's about, you know, it's, 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 it's everything. You, see, you got submarines, you got aircraft, you got aircraft carriers, you got destroyers, you got cruisers. Uh, so the whole, you know, the whole Navy fighting uh, to win the Pacific. So Neptune's Friend, if you haven't read it, it is an amazing book. Uh, you can get it for free on the Navy, uh, you know, the digital library, uh, both on audio and, and books. So no excuse not to read a great book. It reads pretty fast. 
That's outstanding. Outstanding. So I love quotes. And, you know, it's funny. One of my sailors actually put the quote up today, uh, but it was not um, it was not planned. And I was just reading his his Instagram timeline. And the quote is from General George Patton. It's a, a violent uh, a plan executed violently now or I always mess up quotes. Forgive me. But a, a good plan violently executed now is better than the perfect plan next yeah. week. Um that's a great quote to me. I love it. It talks about hard work and being aggressive and going and yeah. get it. What would you say one of your favorite quotes is and, and what is your meaning behind so, it? So I'm going to give you a two. So, you know, I, I'll talk about, you know, one from John Paul Jones, you know, don't give up the ship. And, and in my mind just means, hey, don't ever give up. Always, you know, go, go down fighting. Right? And I think that's it. That is in the spirit of our Navy. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's the kind of spirit that I, that I want to bring to every command. It's that, hey, we're never satisfied. We're always going to be doing the best we can. We're always going to go you know, after the next win. Uh, so, so that's number one. And then one that I, 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 I picked up a couple of years ago when I was going to a, uh, to a, to a leadership course. Uh, and I actually, I keep it on my desk because it's pretty long and I, I don't have it memorized, but I want to read it to you because it, it, it's a neat one. Um, and it's, uh, it was uh, by Lieutenant Colonel uh, uh, Bill F. Which United States Marine Corps. And uh, this guy's a uh, Vietnam hero. Uh, he said, the born leader is a fiction invented by born followers. Le- leadership is not a gift at birth. It is an award for growing up to full moral stature. It is the only award that must be earned every day. The prize is the respect of others earned by the discipline that generates self-respect. So again, uh, I, I, I can't think of a better quote uh, to live up to. You know, and if you want to be a leader, I mean, you, you'll be you'll be in good in good company if you follow those uh, those words there. So I look at it. It sits, it sits on my desk in front of me. Um, it's and I look at it every day. I read it every day. Uh, and, and it does uh, help me make uh, you know tough decisions when you gotta make them, uh, because at the end of the day you gotta you know uh, you gotta live with others. You gotta look yourself in the mirror. Uh, but uh, but if you do the right thing, what you know is right, uh, uh, people respect you, and, and and that's that's what that's what leadership is all about. Yes, sir. All right, that's a great quote. Actually, both of them are great quotes. So uh, <laughs> I think that the the good great thing about the Navy is you can pull so many great quotes from within the Navy and really in yeah. the military in general. Um, and, and a lot of profound things that actually have good meaning to it. So, uh, so we are near the end. Uh, we have, I have one last question. Sure. Uh, and then, and then we're going to turn it over to DC one Scott. Once everybody subscribes, likes, and shares this and gives us a comment. Uh, and, and the reason for that, that we're asking for these likes and all that is so we can get the word out about leadership as we continue to interview, uh, people such as yourself, sir. Um, so that's why we want the, 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 the push out there for this and, Again, I appreciate you putting it out. I appreciate Master Chief Dyer sending out yeah. an email on your behalf yesterday to Recruiting Nation. Big, big thing. Um, so this is your your opportunity to give your best piece of leadership advice ever. Um, so with that being, I think you've given some great advice yeah. already. And I, I wish we could just say recap everything. Uh, but but if you had to give and summarize in a quick thing, what would your best leadership advice be? Uh I think in one sentence, uh, you know, be humble, be honest, work hard, and do not ask people to do something that you're not willing to do. Uh, I think yeah. if you do that as a leader, you 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 you'll be doing very well. Be humble, be honest, work hard, and don't ask people not to do what you're willing to do yourself. Exactly. Almost got it. I think I may have mixed, mixed yeah, up yeah, a couple words there. But... Don't ask people what you won't do. <laughs> exactly. There we go. All right. So. Admiral, great, great, great knowledge. I, I really, truly appreciate it. So what we're going to do is we have about a 1.7 trillion viewers on YouTube, <laughs> or 159. Um, but uh, she has some questions that she has taken from the field. If you have a few minutes for us, sir. Absolutely, man. She's happy to do. Okay, DC1. Okay, let me make sure I'm off. I'm off mute. All right. So if um, just want to throw this out there, if you out there, our viewers out there, have heard anything that you resonate with or that you can completely just just relate to or that inspired you, um, let us know. Give us a, a thumbs up, uh, your favorite emoji. Let us know uh, if something that was said today or some kind of content or in just in conversation today that uh, you left with some sort of inspiration or you can resonate with. So let me go ahead and scroll up. And we have a, a couple of questions here as we were conducting um, the interview. Okay, somebody is asking and they wanna know uh, when we were talking about uh, people uh, or your proudest moments. 
Okay. Do you have any sailors um, that you help transform to this day? You feel very proud of it. Any maybe even group or uh, or anybody in particular that you know you you that comes to mind. Uh, I mean, I tell you, uh, uh, there's 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 lots of lots of folks that have worked with me that have, have done very well. That you know, not because of me, just because they have it in them. Uh, I tell you one. Uh, one petty officer that we just exchanged an email uh, uh, about, about a month ago that blew me away. It's a, uh, I had a uh, Seaman Walker used to be one of the uh, undersecretary seamen on, on my first ship uh, when I when I was in Japan, and uh, he uh, he stroke up to uh, becoming a YN, uh, became the flag sec, uh, you know, for the ship as a YN three. Did fantastic work, and then uh, about a year and a half ago, sent me a note uh, asking for a recommendation for for. Uh, a board uh, for commissioning board OCS got picked up, and then uh, uh, about uh, you know, a few weeks back, just told me that he was heading out to uh, to, to his first ship. So that's one of many stories. I mean, uh, uh, just people that uh, have have gone on again. I got sailors that mass cheese. Uh, I got my jails that are going to be commanders of ships. It's just there's there's a few a few folks that are. I look back and I say that's amazing. All right, good stuff. Yeah. And then uh, another question that we have in regards to the topic about people um, and and not only just about people, but let's say the the situation for shippers not being able to ship out. Somebody's asking, like, when when they lose faith, what kind of advice could you give maybe uh, recruiters or, you know, those out there in the field working one to one with the shippers yeah. that maybe are disappointed, lose faith, and what what kind of advice could you give them to help them along um, when something like that happens? Hey, that's a, that's a great question, and uh, I I do appreciate where we're asked. I've been because that that's something that I've been uh, uh, struggling with and uh, and really working hard to make sure that uh, uh, we get a message across. So uh, thank you for asking that. I think the most important thing, number one, is uh, you know we are we are working through unprecedented times and challenges, uh, and our number one goal as we uh, as we adjust who goes who who stays etc. is the safety of the future sailors and really the safety of the entire recruiting nation too. Um, so as we uh, work through our processes to make sure that we can have uh, you know the right environment at boot camp uh, before boot camp etc. We are learning things and, and we're working uh, uh, through that. Uh, what we are trying to do going forward is is to give uh, you know you all uh, the recruiters on the ground. They're having to have the conversation, the tough conversations of they you can't go this week, you'll go next week, or hey, uh, you're not going to go three years from now. Can you go today? I know those are challenging the conversations to have, but please make sure that they understand that the number one uh, uh, driver for us is safety, uh, and we are working hard to ensure. That we give you as much time as possible to plan and to be able to communicate with uh, those future sailors uh, uh, the the impact to their to their future, uh, but always with the understanding that the number one goal is safety and their success at, at boot camp. Thank you, Admiral. Yeah, and somebody asked, what was the name of that book again? The first book. The the first book. Oh, uh, Neptune's Inferno. Neptune's okay. Inferno. Yeah, it's a great book. All real yes. life. It's, not, it's like science fiction, but it's the real life. So, so with uh, the books and the quotes, we will make sure that they are posted in the in this thread uh, as soon as we're done, so you don't miss out on um, some recommendations that was put out. Uh, and another another book. I know, I know that uh, uh, you only asked me for for book, my favorite book, but I tell you uh, another another good book and. Uh, uh, it, it's it, it's going to become a key to everyone recruiting nation uh, in the next few months. It's a uh, is by uh, uh, Cotter and his leading change. So if you haven't read it on the Cotter books, uh, Harvard Press uh, books uh, on changing and and how do we make change stick and why we change uh, and we evolve, uh, recommend any of them. But leading change is a good one, especially for for those uh, seeking to lead change uh, in, in your organization, in your command, in your church, uh, whatever you are. Uh, Leading Change is a great book. Hmm. Sounds like a good one there, especially with <laughs> dynamic times. Exactly. They're always changing. Oh. All right. Did you want to read the one from uh, Mr. Greg King? Oh, 
No, please do. Mine scrolled up, so I'm sure you're probably looking right at it. All right. So, so uh, uh, Mr. Greg King, you know him, NRC. Uh, so he says you have been on board just over five weeks uh, with limited travel and teleworking HQ staff. Uh, that creates its own problems. I add the the own problems part. But uh, in your short time on board and observations, what is your leadership message to officers and CPOs throughout recruiting nation? I tell you, I go back to to the basics. Is uh, you know, m- make sure that uh, number one, you are uh, fully contributing to 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 the mission. Understand what why we at what we do what we do. Uh, that uh, our you know our goal is to find best fully qualified uh, citizens to become future sailors and sailors in the Navy, um, and that our job is is critical to the safety of the nation. Uh, so, again, be humble. Uh, work hard and, uh, you know, do the best you can every day. Uh, take care of yourselves. And I saw one more, sir. What, uh, it was about mentorship and your thoughts on I'm trying to scroll. Oh, can you speak to the importance of mentorship by somebody by the name of Mimi Johnson? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I've been mentored my entire life. Uh, so I, I truly believe believe in it. I uh, I think it's it is incumbent on, on, on leaders across all levels uh, to mentor people, uh, 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 you know, below you, uh, across from you, uh, because, uh, like I said, as I get older, uh, I get I get the most satisfaction from seeing folks that have had an opportunity to interact with, help with, uh, succeed. Uh, so it's not just good for 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 those that you mentor; it's really good for you and your soul. So I, I truly believe that. That mentoring is one of the things that uh, you, you usually get more than you give. Uh, I know I do. Uh, as I mentor young folks or junior officers, uh, you, you do see some great, great Americans. You really uh, see some great stories of uh, uh, perseverance and uh, an improvement over some difficult odds. So uh, I always, again, I, I always get more from mentoring than what I give. So it's, it's my advice. Do it because it's good. Yes, sir. Good for the soul. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, right. we have uh, another question along the same lines of mentorship, but in regards to the relationship from Ingrid uh, Santos, I believe is also known as NC1 Rosado. And she asks, have you ever been a mentor to another inspiring leader? And how did you go about establishing that relationship? So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, uh, I've mentored officers, I've mentored, uh, you know, junior, junior sailors, uh, et cetera, through, through my time. Um, and sometimes uh, it, it, it it happens because they come up to you and you know they you start a relationship relationship that way. Uh, other times, uh, uh, it, it's kind of part of the job, and you, you see it up on yourself a, uh, as a role model or not uh, uh, to, to reach out to people that you may be, you may see struggling, etc. Um, so I think both ways. Um, it's a it, it's it's I think fifty fifties. Uh, people come up to you. People see that you're successful. They want to see why you're successful. Um, and all the time says you see someone that's struggling and you think you can help them. So it's a, it's a two-way street on, on how, how do you mentor and, and, and who do you mentor? All right. Outstanding. Uh, we two more questions. Uh, I'll okay. start with one, sir, uh, in, in DC one, if you could grab the last one from, uh, so I'm going to take it from senior chief Realibit, my ACR, my OACR outstanding, uh, senior chief, uh, and great OACR and, and, and probably a better human. Uh, it says, Admiral, what do you think the most important asset or resource we have in the Navy? I mean, that's pretty easy. It's the people. So, I mean, that's a, that's a thank you for the softball there, Senior Chief. <laughs> Five O in judgment. Um, no, I, I, again, it, it is the people. And, and that's why it, it's it, our job is so important. And that's why uh, I'm so excited to be here because we get to bring in that. I mean, Honest, think about it. If we don't bring the right people into the Navy, we don't have the best Navy in the world. Uh, and, and that's why being a recruiter uh, is it, it, so critical. Uh, and, and it's, hey, it is mission essential. That's why we're still working today. We'll be working for the last six and a half weeks because it is, it is mission critical to get that, the most important thing that we have, which is our people. Outstanding. Anything else, NC1? <laughs> or DC1? I, I'm trying to get her convert, sir. So that, she's, that, that, that sounded pretty good, actually. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> one, Scott, we hey, talked hey, about it last week. All right, let's stick, maybe, maybe let's stick with right um, what do you think there, DC1? testing. <laughs> testing with, with these questions. I don't want to miss out on these questions. Okay. okay. 
So we have a question from, uh, and this is something very relevant right now. And we're talking about innovation and change. So Chief Ramirez, she asks, uh, she says, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Uh, may I hear your heart on e-talent? Like, what is your vision? Now with, uh, it was NTAGs uh, across across the board with, you know, the e-talent teams. And now uh, across the nation, we have the NRDs that are establishing their e-talent teams. Well, I think, I, uh, I know that I have a big fan there on, on the electronic world with DC1 Scott. I mean, what she did today at lunch, uh, it, it is uh, it's critical to what we do. Uh, I think that e-talents is one, it, it, it's, it's a critical piece uh, of our strategy going forward, especially uh, you know, where we're living today and um, in a, you know, inability to you know, go to schools, go to college, et cetera. Uh, so that e-talent management is, is key. And that's why we rolled that out faster. We, uh, can we, how, how can we uh, help the, some of the NRDs that are not set up the same way that the NTAGs are uh, to really take advantage of uh, of, of what we're seeing now, which is an increased, increased, increased traffic to the website, increased number of phone calls. Um, so we are going to evolve faster. Uh, I think this, this COVID environment is, is going to drive us to evolve uh, and adopt uh, other practices that we've been either not, not reluctant, but just we're slow to, to, uh, to adopt uh, as we go forward, because if we don't, we're going to fall behind. Um, so more to follow there, uh, uh, Chief, uh, uh, this is one start, but again, uh, we have to change, uh, you know, because they, it's being forced on us by, by the environment uh, that, that we're living in and, and, and how we, we're going to have to adjust to a, to a new way of doing business, at least in the, in the near term. Um, but Italian and, and all those uh, uh, electronic means of communications are critical uh, to our future and to our ability to, uh, you know, connect to the uh, future, future sailors and, and those folks that don't think they're future sailors, but may uh, may be uh, a, we may be able to bring him into the in, into the roles. Over. All right. Well, DC one. I don't think we're I think we're done with questions for right now. Uh, oh, you have one more. I have one more. And Admiral, thank you so much for answering all of these yeah, questions that, that everybody are are asking on this platform because um, our our mission, our vision uh, for this podcast was to talk about the leadership within. Um, so we're dibbling and dabbling with a whole bunch of different topics here, but we do have a question. Um, Marie Kennedy asked, how do you deal with a toxic staff member in a small setting? So in a toxic environment, uh, maybe negative people, it sounds like, what's your best advice? You know, that, that's, a, that's always difficult, but I think uh, uh, you have to, you, you cannot ignore it. Ignore it. Just, uh, just, uh, just breathe more toxicity and uh, uh, dysfunction in the in the environment. So, as a leader, as a peer, I uh, just have to uh, uh, confront uh, you know the individual, uh, and you have to uh, set up expectations. You know, if you're a peer, uh, you got to set up the expectations. If you're a, if you're a leader, uh, you got to demand the expectation. You know the, what the expectations are, uh, and if you're a follower and that's what you're seeing, uh, you're also uh, you know you, you have venues to be able to. To, to air those those grievances uh, with the chain of command, uh, but doing nothing is not acceptable. Uh, it, it's part of, of being a good leader to uh, either uh, uh, confront and work it, and if you're not in a position to do it, to uh, uh, bring people that can, uh, because le allowing the status quo to remain just, just does not help uh, the mission or the command. It just gets worse with time. It doesn't get any better. Very good. Are we good now, DC1? <laughs> if we have anything else, I think we can answer answer it offline. Um, right. So that'll be good. So uh, Admiral, again, thank you so much for being here again. Appreciate your staff and everybody put, helping get this together. DC1 is always uh, the left and the right hand of this organization, the leadership within, if you will. Um, Say NC1, right? NC1 Scott. <laughs> she's not getting away. I told her I have her letter of recommendation <laughs> on my computer. I just I, need the I, word. I have one too. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, Ad, well, thank you so much. I know you're a busy man. I appreciate yeah. your time. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let you go now in, in DC1 for now. And I will we'll finish this out with the YouTube and, and close up the, uh, the leadership within moment. So again, I thank you and your entire staff. Have a blessed day. Have a great Navy day. Thanks, Master Chief. And I appreciate uh, everyone out there for listening. And again, I'm proud of what you all do uh, as a recruiting nation and just really humble. I am proud to be part of this amazing team. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. All right. So here we are, NCDC one. That so, was pretty exciting. How awesome was that? Uh, that was that was really good. That was really good. He's uh I tell you what, a lot of great leadership advice there. Um, a lot of things you can extract from that and and kind of get out there into whether your work event or your environment, I, I'd say. Um so I, I do want to keep a reminder, this is about leadership. This is a, a leadership um, kind of the leadership within. It's right there. It's about leadership. It's not recruiting specific. So That was very nice to, kind of him to answer those questions. It was. It was. Um, so here's what we would like is that we subscribe, we like, we share, we, we tell people about it. Because the more people that know about it, the more people we get to kind of understand leadership. Um, you know, and we always say, or our boss did A, our boss did B. Um, I disagree with it. Maybe it's because we don't understand the leadership aspect that has to go into it and those hard decisions. So please, the more we do this, the more views and, and the more viewpoints that we get, are able to give you, uh, the better understanding of leadership. And that's yeah. really important, not just for the Navy, but everybody. You know, Master Chief, something that comes to mind um, when we're talking about either like a toxic environment or toxic people that uh, I have learned is that it's not trying not to take that personally. And I had a hard time dealing with that and understanding it. And I'm to the point now where I do understand that it's not it's not necessarily maybe anything having to do with you. But that person or that experience of that person or that per something that that person is going through. So just don't take it personal. It's not you. It's it's them, something they're dealing with. No, it, it's 100 percent. To go back to toxic thing is, or keep on the topic of toxic is. If you allow it, like the admiral said, if you allow it, that that becomes OK to that person or to those, that group of people, you have got to say something. Um, and you have, have to set those boundaries, those standards, those expectations. If you don't do that, then you are complicit in, in that happening. So you have got to take that leadership. And it's not easy. Leadership is, is, is one of the most difficult things in life to do. I heard a thing from T.D. Jakes today. I think that's his name. I had a good friend send me a thing. T.D. Jakes, right? Yeah. So he said something and the, and the message was so powerful from the start. And what he said was he was in the crowd, right? And, you know, they bring the lights on the stage. And if he's like, if you're looking for me or if you're looking for leadership, it's not always in front of you. And then he's out in the middle of the crowd and the, the camera points to him. It was a little dramatic, but it was so <laughs> poignant on that leadership is not just a title or a role. It's not just positional power. There are so many aspects of leadership and, you know, 360 degree leadership. That means above, below, behind, to the side, everywhere. So lead from everywhere and you can find it anywhere. And you can do the right thing and step up and be a great leader, even if you don't have that positional authority or that positional power base. Right. So our positional power base is the rank, you know, that's part of the military. But you can get you can garner those. I, I wish I could remember all the power bases. Some of my, my friends that have been to the SEA or have leadership uh, schools and stuff, they could probably tell you all of them because they're much smarter than I am. But uh those power bases, of course, not just about the rank. It's not about the position. It's about who you are and what you can do and what you bring to the table. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us, too. Yes, ma'am. So, um, like, share, booms, comments. I, I sincerely apologize about the Facebook. We're going to figure that out. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sad about it because uh, we, we've got a lot of followers on there. I think it would have been pretty big, but we will post it. Um, and, and I'm, I'm working to post it on a couple other places. So we'll definitely have it on the leadership within once I download it and we'll upload it there. Um, special guest for next week. Are you guys excited? Drum roll. Wait, have I told you NC1, DC1? Uh, you have not shared that with me. So I this is new to me. That's why I'm excited. That's why I'm like, Hey, anytime I get excited, I do this to training too, during training too, but I'm like, all right, drum roll. I'm really excited. All right, drum roll. So it's a good friend of mine, the Commissioner for Veterans Affairs for the City of Boston. That's his title. That's a long title. The Commissioner for Veterans Affairs for the City of Boston. I don't even know how it's on a business card. Rob Santiago. He's an old yeoman in the Navy. He's now running the entire Veterans Affairs for the City of Boston. Um, a great guy. You've met him, DC1. 
I have, I have. Uh, at during the, uh, the Boston surge, uh, AK also swarm event. Yeah. Yes. The greatest one in history. So um, he is going to be our special guest next week. And so that's why I want everybody to understand this is not recruiting specific because Rob Santiago doesn't know anything outside of recruiting other than the people that he knows in recruiting. Uh, he's never recruited. This is about leadership and he'll be able to give us some unique perspectives of of dealing in, in, in the leadership environment of the civilian sector and how you can employ some of those things here. And, you know, we have a lot of civilians in the Navy, a lot. And there's, you know, we have a certain mindset, but not every civilian that you come in contact has um, those types of mindsets. So you have to understand how to navigate that as well as a leader. If you cannot navigate military, civilian in every aspect, it could be a very difficult go for you. So please tune in next week. I promise we'll have Facebook fixed. Um, if not, then it will always be DC One Scott. I'll pull my letter of recommendation. No, you, <laughs> you know, I actually, right as we were going live, um, I shared the link to YouTube uh, for those on Facebook to be able to click onto. But yeah, we'll go ahead and make sure that, that they're able to, to view it simply by going to the Leadership Within Facebook page as right. well. So. so, little drum roll, because the week after that, I am working on a big guy. Oh, a big guy. Are you going to tell big us now? Guy. Tell I us told now. you about him. Yeah, Working yeah, on a big guy. I don't know. Are they? Are you going to tell us now? No, gonna I'm not going to tell you now because it's not. It's not. Oh. It's not. Submitted. It's not. It hasn't been set. It's a big guy. Great guy. Phenomenal leader. Master motivator. Phenomenal dude. Uh, so we'll see. I hope All it right. comes through. Um, I'll let you know. So hopefully we'll have something ironed out early this week. I'm in comms with him and uh, hopefully we'll get that there. Uh, but I am also looking for other people. So um, the first four people came from this brain um, and this brain ain't big. So if you have people that you think were great um, leaders and motivators and people that should could add a lot of value to this, let us know. Send us an email from the, the leadership within at gmail.com. Send it on a on a on a post on the on one of the pages. Uh, call us, text us, do whatever you need to do. But if you have people that you think should be on here, by all means, please let us know. I'm more than happy to get them on here. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell everybody this is valuable for you. That's what we want it to be. Give us advice, give us counsel, give us your thoughts. Yes. And thank you for being here with us today. Yes. That's always, that's going to be your signing off thing, I believe, DC1 is. And thank you for being with us. Everybody, I am uh, I'm much appreciative of you being here. DC1, always with you. And uh, this is it. So on to week three, I reckon. Here we go. Here we go. Have a great right, week, we, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.